Tonight, we report on the weekend's activities from hydroplane racing to airplane racing and about the large wildland fire near Soap Lake. What's happening in sports, Sean? Thanks, Amber. The Wenatchee Apple Sox come back in the ninth against Corvallis and the Seahawks sign a former University of Washington receiver. Let's take a glance at our Weather Center forecast. Hello everybody, good to be with you. Dry and warm conditions do continue across the entire area, but there is some hazardous weather in the forecast. All the details in a few moments. I'm Amber Jinx and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. One man was killed and four others injured in a collision Sunday morning on Dodson Road south of Ephrata. Jacob Weaver, a 22-year-old Moses Lake man, was driving a 2005 Cadillac CTS south on Dodson Road when he reportedly crossed the center line and struck a 1997 Toyota 4Runner head-on. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, Weaver died at the scene. The driver of the Toyota and his three passengers were injured and taken to local hospitals. Dotson Road was closed until about 5.30 p.m. on Sunday. The Sheriff's Office is investigating. A large wildland fire burned at least 200 acres near Soap Lake on Sunday. Reporter Joe Utter has the story. A wildfire burned at least 200 acres along State Route 28 near Soap Lake on Sunday. Grant County Fire District 7 initially responded to an outside fire near SR 28 and Adrian Road, about five miles east of Soap Lake. Several homes were threatened, but firefighters were able to surround the homes and contain the fire. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, no homes were damaged. Firefighters from across Grant County provided mutual aid. The fire burned between 200 and 500 acres of sagebrush and grass. The cause of the fire is under investigation. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. A fire destroyed a vacant house on Saturday morning about 15 miles west of Moses Lake. Grant County Fire District 5 and Fire District 13 responded to a structure fire on Road D Northwest and arrived to a fully engulfed home. The house has been abandoned for several years. Nobody was inside and no injuries were reported. The house was a complete loss. The Grant County Fire Marshal's Office is investigating the cause of the fire. On a lighter note, the Grant County Historical Museum came to life and people visiting learned more about our local history. Reporter Cameron Probert was there and has the details. People had a chance to experience the history of Grant County Saturday afternoon. The Grant County Historical Museum held its annual Living Museum event, allowing people to look at displays of artifacts, watch people stage mock gunfights, and see other demonstrations. Pat Witham, the museum's director, said the event marks the beginning of the season for the museum. And it's just to show people what we were at one point in time in Grant County. People could look in the shops and see items people purchased, visit the blacksmith and have their initials placed on a piece of wood, or watch the Grant County Sheriff's Posse and other volunteers perform skits. Felix Ramon and Ron Tolson were two of the volunteers helping to stage the gunfight. They said they used about 100 blanks during the course of a day. Tolson said they perform skits for the children's benefit and to help the community. Because we're big kids and we like to play cowboys. People can visit the museum between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. on Sunday. For iFiber One News, this is Cameron Probert reporting. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this. Just when I thought the blizzard couldn't get any better, DQ put the blizzard inside a waffle cone. This is mind-blowing. 
So when DQ asked me how I would tell the world, I said... <laughs> Sounds better in Italian. Pretty impressive, Liz. Any blizzard, like confetti cake, now in a fresh-baked waffle cone. This is fan food, not fast food. At Moses Lake Community Health Center, we have had the privilege to serve the local communities since 1978. What I like about working at this clinic more than any other clinic that I've worked at is the patient care. With the patient care team that we've assembled, it allows us to take care of as many facets of the patient and their family's needs. Please take the opportunity to experience the high quality care provided at our clinics. Hello everybody, good to be with you. I'm Ceci Gutierrez with your local weather report from the One News Weather Center. And it is brought to you by iFiber One's Inside Look. Watch it today on iFiberOne.com. We begin with a quick look at your headlines across the area. Some mountain showers cannot be ruled out, but overall we are enjoying dry conditions overnight tonight and Throughout the next couple of days, it won't be the exception. We're anticipating quiet weather to continue as we head into this Thursday. These dry and warm days in store. Now, as we head into Friday and Saturday, things could change up a bit. Cannot rule out some hazardous activity across the area. And this in the form of showers, a rumble of thunder or two. And some of these thunderstorms, if they do develop, could possibly generate some strong gusty winds and heavy rains. Temperatures topped out around 88 in Ephrata this afternoon. Average should be 79 sunset at 8.56 this evening. Along and across Moses Lake, similar conditions, temperatures, the low registered at 57 and the sunset 8.55. Here's a quick peek at the conditions right outside your door. Still hang hanging in there in the upper 80s with a wind out of the northeast very light. Here's overall pretty dry and warm in the northwest with mostly cloudy skies. Cannot rule out a little bit of uh, precipitation activity, slight chance of uh, showers in an isolated fashion. And as we head into this Tuesday morning, beautiful weather out there is expected with mostly clear skies. Some cloud cover expected to develop along the mountains in the northwest. Overall pretty dry with the exception of some isolated showers here. So a quick look as we head into Thursday, we notice increasing cloud cover early on in the morning. So once again, for this Tuesday afternoon, we're expecting some cloud cover and upon array, we are anticipating some dry conditions, mid eighties, as well as across Spokane, flirting with the 90 degree mark in the Tri-Cities area. And uh, along the basin, a similar scenario, dry conditions and notice these temperatures we're expecting to top out around the lower 90s and overall right around the 90 degree mark. Our readings approximately 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. And these above average temperatures expected to continue. We'll see a slight drop as we head into Friday, increasing cloud cover overall pretty dry for this Saturday. And then as we head into Monday, some cloud cover and notice those temperatures, mercury rising again into the mid to upper 80s. This segment brought to you by iFiber One's Inside Look. Watch it today on iFiber1.com. We'll be right back with sports. My name is Cheryl Kono. I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance. We are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. The Wenatchee Apple Sox scored five runs in the ninth inning, but it wasn't enough against the Corvallis Knights. The Sox tied the game at 9-9, but the Knights broke through in the 12th to take the game 11-10. Corvallis sweeps the three-game series while the Apple Sox fall to 1-5.
through their first six league games. The Sox will look to break the stride tonight when they face off against the Medford Rogues in a three-game home series. Hunter Wells takes the mound for Wenatchee, first pitch at 7.05. It was a back and forth game last night in the NBA Finals until Steph Curry broke loose. The league's MVP couldn't miss from downtown. From Barbosa has been fabulous tonight. Barnes throws it down! And the foul! Harrison Barnes with authority and a chance in favor. Della Vidova out to Shepard. Shepard guarded by Curry. Five to shoot. Back out LeBron James. Puts up the three. Gets it to go. LeBron James from way down. Thompson puts it up. Rebound tip. Iguodala on the follow. Count it and a foul. Curry looking for that opening. Steps back. Crossover. Fires away. Wow. Three from Curry. The Warriors take a 3-2 series lead and will look to close out the championship Tuesday night in Cleveland. The 2015 misery of a season continues for the Seattle Mariners. When you don't score any runs, it's hard to win a ball game. And when you give up 13, it's near impossible. The shot out into right center field. In for a hit. That'll score Springer. And two to nothing Astros. Shot on the ground. It gets by Seeger and into left field. Coming to the plate. Ackley with a throw. Not in time. Martinez. Out to right center field. This could shoot the gap for Marisnik. Extra bases for Jake. It bounces over into the. To shallow left field, and that will be in for a hit. Nothing Astros. Correa scoring on. Ground ball. Correa to his right. On to Carter. And the Mariners have no runs, no hits, and one error. Someone call a doctor because the Mariners need help now. Seattle starts a three-game series with the Giants tonight in San Francisco. The Seattle Seahawks have signed former Washington Husky wide receiver Kaysen Williams. The six foot three receiver was a parade all American player at Skyline High School. He caught 77 passes for 878 yards as a sophomore at UW before a serious leg injury troubled the rest of his college career. Williams claims to be 100% healthy and plans on competing immediately for a roster spot. We'll be right back after this commercial break. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health's cancer program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility, and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home. speed like never before. When you connect to Grant PUD's high-speed network, visit grantpud.org to learn more. Our spotlight story tonight is about Sage and Son Family Festival in Ephrata. Reporter Joe Utter was there to tell us about the event. The 105th annual Sage and Son Family Festival officially kicked off Thursday night, but participants for the Grand Parade were lining up early Saturday morning to make their way through downtown. The parade kicked off at 11 a.m. starting at the high school and making its way through downtown and along C Street by the Grant County Courthouse. The parade included groups from Afreda High School and Soap Lake Schools, horses, tractors, fire trucks, and even a float from the Royal School District inspired by the Hunger Games book and movie series. 
Following the parade, people made their way to the front of the courthouse, where for the first time, the farmer's market joined the festival. Farmer's market has joined us, and uh, that's turning great. we got a lot of people looking for them and heading over there. Clark said also new this year was added entertainment and games for children. As we have for free, we have a beanbag toss and a ring toss, and they get stickers for participating. And then we also have a bouncy house this year that's $2 for five minutes and some face painting. We also have uh, free kid drawings. So just for being here, the kids get a ticket. We draw every so often, they get to come pick a prize. The always popular food booths and commercial vendors stayed busy throughout the day while live music entertained the crowd at the main stage. We uh, feature local entertainment. So we've had cloggers and singers and dancers and a guitarist. And we have some great fair type food and vendors selling uh, handmade good and commercial goods. Great for everybody. Clark said she was happy to see the festival grow this year, and one thing has remained constant over the years. This festival has gone uh, fluctuated over the years. We used to have Sunday, we no longer do. Uh, there's different vendors that have come in and out, but the one thing that remains the same is lots of families. Clark said volunteers begin the planning process for the festival about a year in advance and are already preparing for next year's event and looking for volunteers. We start right after the next festival end. This festival ends, so it takes uh, a village, as they say, and uh, we do it all year round. We are looking for volunteers. We've gotten some new volunteers this year, and we are still looking for more. The Sage and Sun Festival is completely funded by local businesses and community members, who Clark said stepped up this year to help the festival grow. The festival officially kicks off summer every second weekend in June. Anyone wanting to volunteer to help organize next year's festival can contact organizers at afredasageandsun at yahoo.com. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. We will be right back after this. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. what's white and yellow and red all over. If you said the local book telephone directory, the one with the purple sunset on the cover, then you're right. In print and online at statewidewhitebee.com, it features up-to-date local maps, community information, and a calendar of events. With a restaurant dining guide with full local menus and a reverse directory, you're sure to find the number you're looking for. It's the best way to get the information you need. Pick up a copy of the local book today or visit statewidewhitebee.com. Welcome back. A man drowned after a possible medical emergency while walking his dogs along the Banks Lake near Grand Coulee. The body of Michael Nachigal, a 63-year-old Mansfield resident, was found Thursday afternoon near the shore on the north side of Banks Lake. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office on Friday, a woman located Nachigal's pickup truck on a private land Thursday morning along with his two dogs. The truck was parked at the location since Wednesday. Investigators did not find any signs of foul play, and Nachigal regularly visited the recreation area. The Grant County Coroner's Office is performing an autopsy. The loud sounds and water spraying on Soap Lake was coming from hydroplanes as they raced on Soap Lake during the annual regatta. Reporter Joe Utter has the story. It was a perfect weekend for hydroplane racing in Soap Lake as more than 50 boats, including the Grand Prix hydroplanes, hit the water. A few hundred people line the shores at Smokayan Park for the two-day event held at Soap Lake for the third straight year. Racers from across the state and as far as Alaska competed in the American Powerboat Association sanctioned race. Chris Bertram, a racer from Eatonville, Washington, was unable to race on Sunday after his boat went airborne during Saturday's race. Bertram explains what happened. Yeah, we, uh, we were racing yesterday in the final heat and uh, I was leading and uh, the boat going into the corner uh, was perfectly set up and the outside sponson or the inside sponson actually just came off. Broke away from the boat. The boat slid out about 
20 feet and then went airborne like an airplane, cartwheel, landed upside down and then uh, rolled right side up, but half of it was gone. Bertram has competed in the regatta all three years and said he's never had problems with the mineral or water. The alkalinity in the water is one thing, but uh, the water is actually really good when there's no wind. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. People in the 400 homes in Lakeview Park were asked to boil their water after E. coli bacteria was found in the water. The bacteria were discovered during a routine test. Dorothy Tibbetts, the State Department of Health Regional Manager for the Office of Drinking Water, said the discovery led officials to conduct five additional tests. One of the samples in the second test had coliform bacteria. The coliform bacteria can indicate the presence of E. coli and lead to officials to issue a boil water advisory. E. coli is a bacteria generally found in the digestive systems of most animals. Exposure can cause diarrhea, abdominal cramps or nausea and vomiting. Department officials stated no one has reported becoming ill. As hydroplanes raced on Soap Lake, airplanes raced in the sky above Grant County. Reporter Devin Higgins was there and took a ride to report on the story. 18 pilots from across the Pacific Northwest came to the Afredo Municipal Airport on Saturday to take part in the 6th Annual Great Northwest Air Race. Some pilots were racing for the first time, while others were seasoned veterans, and some were working on getting the next generation of air racers some experience. The 140-mile race got underway around 11 a.m., and while the skies were sunny, the air was choppy and turbulent from start to finish. Pilot Stu Van Buren talked about how he dealt with the difficult conditions. It's just a matter of keeping it smooth. That's the key to it. You want to be smooth on the turns and uh, try to hold your altitude as best you can. Uh, every time you move your rudders and your ailerons, it slows you down a little bit. So you want to be as smooth as you can. The day ended with pilots receiving awards and plaques for their finishing time and average speed. Most said they're already looking forward to coming back next year. In Afreda, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. That's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.